praise God. Father God has great plans for your life. And that's why we always turn to his roadmap for life, the Bible. Praise God for the word of God. Let's pray about this. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for your word, your word of life, the roadmap for our life. God, you haven't left us alone, but you have given us your precious Holy Spirit on assignment to teach us wisdom, to teach us all about your wisdom, understanding, and knowledge so that we can walk life on the roadmap of your word and be accurate at every turn. In every decision in life, God, we receive from you and we thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Wisdomology part three, that's what we're talking about. And we're going to dial in on the word bandwidth, spiritual bandwidth for life. Let's do a quick review. Of course, we keep building on the fundamental truth that wisdom is the principal thing. Say that out loud, the principal thing. It's the foundation for everything seen and unseen. Wisdom is the first before understanding and before knowledge. That's what we've learned. That showed up in part two as we focused on the essential element of wisdomology, which is order. Order is the border to success. It's the stairway to every next level of blessing that God has destined, pre-authorized for you. Without order, you get jam all over your fingers and your new couch is sitting out in the pouring rain. If you didn't hear part two, then you need to check that out and you'll understand what I'm talking about. We even learn how to shower and put on our socks. So it's a big deal. Wisdomology. It's profitable for every single area of your life. God's wisdomology. Now, let's get into part three, bandwidth. Bandwidth. You're going to like this, my friend. God wants to expand and grow your spiritual bandwidth. Some of you are going, what in the world is that? I'm already excited. Sadly, I've seen many Christians come under the pressure of trials and just sink deeper and deeper. That's not God's plan for you, my friend. And neither is it his desire for your life. If God's love is not the variable, because we absolutely know that God deeply, deeply loves you with an unfailing love, well, then what is the variable? Wisdom and how much you have of it, how much you put to work in your life, that's the variable. Generally speaking, what I've noticed in times of great adversity, temptation, and trauma is that some have this perception that God has a difficult time transmitting the answers to them. Like God's having a hard time getting his provision and his goodness through to them. That's so far from the truth, it's actually absurd. The difficulty shows up in our receiving the answer. God never struggles transmitting his love, his grace, his help, his courage, his anointing, his wisdom, or his power. After all, Romans 5, 8 says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for all of us. He was paying the price while we were still in rebellion. That's love. We, on the other hand, can struggle with the reception problem. We can be bandwidth challenged. God can give us a Niagara Falls flow of blessing, but if all we have is a tiny, tiny little juice straw, it really doesn't matter how powerful and abundant the flow is. We're only accessing a little drip, a little drip of blessing here and there. We need some serious wisdomology now, so let's talk bandwidth. Bandwidth. What is bandwidth? Well, one definition says it's the maximum amount or volume of information that can be transmitted over an internet connection in a given amount of time. You can have bandwidth this size, or you can have bandwidth this size with unlimited restriction that allows so much flow. Some refer to bandwidth as the energy, the mental capacity required to deal with a life crisis or a situation. Can you imagine trying to buy something on Amazon and having to wait 30 minutes for each page to load? You, you wouldn't tolerate that, would you? You'd walk away, you'd give up, you might even blame it on Amazon. Why? 
because we have zero tolerance of a narrow bandwidth, don't we? We've developed this expectation and reliance on the invisible. We put demands on our internet bandwidth. Can you imagine buying a car and the stereo had such a narrow bandwidth that it only got one station? The audacity, sell this car, get rid of it, I don't want it. But sir, it's a, it's a brand new Maserati, I don't care. What am I gonna listen to? The bandwidth is too narrow, just dump it, get rid of it. It's interesting, bandwidth is basically a measurement on something invisible, but it has become so important to us as humans. We don't want to wait five seconds for a page to load, do we? We're exasperated when there's no cell signal, no Wi-Fi. Mom, mom, I, I've, I've used up all my gigs. I can't take it. <laughs> I work with recording programs, and about a few years ago, I bought this huge, huge virtual plug-in for my recording software. Well, it took over an hour, probably close to two hours, for the new purchase to download. I, I was in amazement because I've become so conditioned to instant, now, fast, and faster. A boy was trying to explain this to his dad, why they needed a faster network with more bandwidth. He was trying to get the message across to his dad. He was like, Dad, it's, it's like you trying to squeeze into your pants that you used to wear 15 years ago. <laughs> ah, don't even bother trying to picture that. It isn't pretty. With the new frontier of couples working from home, they don't compete for closet space anymore. No, now they compete for bandwidth to download and upload their work assignments. So now let me transfer this thought to your spiritual bandwidth. Each one of us has a spiritual bandwidth that is our streaming ability to download wisdom. It's set by our faith and our trust in God. We receive wisdom by faith. Spiritual bandwidth increases in an exercise of faith and trust. It's a little stretching. You have to develop your capacity. If you don't ask for wisdom, you don't get wisdom. Proverbs 4 verse 7 says, get wisdom but that does require you to increase and stretch your capacity. Get wisdom, how? Using faith. Life is not a teacher, my friend. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. He uses God's word and even the simple little things in life. I know some people that have experienced lots of life and yet they get more foolish with every consequence they experience. Trials don't make you wise. I don't know if you've noticed that. Wisdom makes you wise. Just because you're older doesn't mean you're wiser unless you choose to grow your spiritual bandwidth and receive more. James 1, starting at verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom to guide him through a decision or circumstance, he is to ask our benevolent God who gives to everyone generously and without rebuke or blame, and it will be given to him. But he must ask for wisdom in faith without doubting God's willingness to help. For the one who doubts is like a billowing surge of the sea that is blown about and tossed by the wind. For such a person ought not to think or expect that he will receive anything at all from the Lord. Being a double-minded man, unstable and restless in all of his ways, in everything he thinks, feels, or decides. Look, nobody is born with spiritual bandwidth, broadband wisdom. Nobody. Your heart must be gradually grown to process and receive wisdom. It's called growth. Remember, Jesus, the Son of God, increased. He had to increase and grow in wisdom. You can read that at the end of Luke chapter 2. One of the wisest kings on earth was wise. Why? Because he got wisdom from the source, from God. Look at 1 Kings 4 verse 29. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding, exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. Did you hear that? God didn't just give Solomon wisdom, but he increased his capacity to hold wisdom. Bandwidth for wisdom and wisdom for decisions. Let's face it, great decisions make life work and make life work really well. Wisdom is necessary for great decisions.
Case in point, when you choose Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you become a child of God. That's the outcome of a great decision. You just made a choice to make your life work, to make eternity work for you. Edwin Lewis Cole, the founder of the Christian Men's Network, said this, being a male is a matter of birth. Being a man is a matter of choice. There are some things we are inherently born with, but wisdom, wisdom is a choice. You got to choose it. We live in a day when preference and opinion are exalted above the truth. That's not wisdom. Wisdom brings comfort because it's an accurate application of the standard of life. On the other hand, the pursuit of comfort often brings chaos. Why? Because it's the pursuit of an outcome without the principle. Can I say that again? It's the pursuit of the outcome but without the principle. It's wanting the fruit while despising the tree that it grows on. Wanting the fruit of wisdom, but hating wisdom is an offense. It's actually sinning against your destiny. The, the good plans that God has for you. Some think because God loves us, therefore his plans are just automatic. His will is just done. Not so. Not so. Great decisions are a key part of you being you. So why doesn't each one of us just prioritize our decisions? Well, truthfully, we underestimate the weight of our decisions and the unlimited possibilities available for good or bad. The enemy of your life wants you to diminish the importance of your decisions so that he can basically lure you to your own destruction. He tempts us to try and rewrite sin as when, but it doesn't make it so, does it? That's subjective morality. That's how depression, brokenness, longingness, and emptiness persist and persist without any mercy. We all must increase our bandwidth because growth is essential to life. Luke 2, verse 52, look at this. And Jesus kept increasing in wisdom and in stature, and in favor with God and men. Why would we think increasing in wisdom is an option? Jesus had to increase in wisdom. Wisdom is a requirement for true favor. Favor, the God kind, opens the God kind of doors. Remember, wisdom is not intellect or smart. It's the principal thing. It's fundamental. It's foundational. If you're not growing, you're not in God's will. If you're not being corrected, you're not experiencing God's true love. Hebrews 12 verse 8 says, If you are exempt from correction, then you are not a true child of God. John 15 verse 2, Jesus said that God the Father continually cleanses and prunes every branch that's fruitful. Correction is part of life growth, increasing your capacity. There's a lot of talk of what is essential today. Growth is essential to life. Your life, anything alive has to grow. That's basic. That's 101. Yes, that is essential. You have a physical body, but you are a spiritual being. Your spirit being, it must grow. Whether you're building a house, a tower, a business, a ministry, a family, or a life, growth demands a true foundation to support it. It's essential, it's critical, and it's basic. And if your foundation is compromised in any way, all growth is set up for disaster. Senator John Kennedy from the great state of Louisiana said this, power does not change you, it unmasks you. You could say the same thing for wealth or success, fame or influence. Without God's wisdom, growth can actually be fatal. Just ask the cow, the steer in the rancher's pasture, pounding back the calories as the price of beef skyrockets. Ah, if he had any wisdom, he'd be doing intermittent fasting, right? <laughs> ah, I love it when people come to Christ and get born again. But now growth, growth must occur. That's called discipleship. Getting converted is not getting discipled. Getting access to wisdom is not downloading wisdom. Pam and I had a neighbor in Nashville, Tennessee, and his name was Daryl. 
We were praying for Daryl to come to Jesus. He had some real struggles, some real problems. And we came home from being on the road and Daryl told us that he got saved, born again. But he had a ton of conditions. He wanted to get saved by the Savior, but did not want the Savior's wisdom. He didn't want the Savior's direction. He wanted the benefits. He wanted the blessings, but without the principle, without the wisdom. Daryl had zero spiritual bandwidth for God's wisdom. No flow. Look, Daryl had no flow. Daryl needed this, but Daryl didn't even have this, not even a drip. He wanted to be born again, but not grow. Daryl wanted mega blessings, mega help from God, but the problem is he had no straw. No capacity to get the blessings through. 2 Peter 3 verse 18 says, But grow spiritually mature in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The knowledge of whom? Jesus. Who is Jesus? Think about this. Remember, we already learned it. He is the Word, John 1 says. Jesus is the manifest Word and therefore the manifest wisdom of God. Luke 2 verse 52 Remember, we, I want to remind you again of Jesus as a young boy. It says, and he kept increasing in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and men. God has designed everything to grow and you are no exception. Growth is basic to your life. Growth is what you're designed for and it's essential. It's basic to your design. Spiritual bandwidth is a capacity for wisdom. Your ability to receive wisdom. Remember, wisdom precedes favor. Are you having trouble receiving answers to your prayers? God's transmitting, but are you receiving? Are you operating on a single straw? A single straw of bandwidth? Believing for a 100 gigabyte download? Or do you have broad bandwidth capacity of straws for unlimited downloads of wisdom, blessing, help, direction. It's all about capacity. Change is coming, my friend. It can either be forced on you as a consequence because you lack spiritual bandwidth and you're missing out on wisdom downloads, or you can be activating change with growth and increase because you have the spiritual bandwidth to easily receive the wisdom that you need. This is basic to life. This is the 101 stuff of wisdomology. Growth is part of life and living. You were made for wisdom. Spiritually speaking, your bandwidth growth is important to receiving from God your Father. Every one of us must replace sinful, stinking thinking with God's unfailing wisdom. Let me say it this way. Every one of us must replace sinful, stinking thinking, that kind of bandwidth. <laughs> Every one of us must replace that with wisdom, God's unfailing wisdom wisdom capacity, right? God's thinking. But you need to trust. You need to trust in God, faith in God to move the wisdom downloads into your heart. Proverbs 8 verses 35 to 36. For whoever finds me, wisdom finds life and draws forth and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who misses me or sins against me wrongs and injures himself. All who hate me love and court death. So it's application time. How do we increase your bandwidth for wisdom? It's kind of like setting your thermostat in your home. When you don't like the facts or the circumstances concerning the temperature in your home or your apartment, you could do this, you could complain. That's what many people do about life. They just complain, they lament. Or you could blame the circumstances. Oh, the weather. It just, it's just making my life miserable. Or you could just suffer. Some people have a bear down and suffer mentality. Well, what can you do, right? You just might as well suffer through it. Or you could include it in your ideology, therefore your theology. Well, you know, I think God's trying to teach me something. This must be his will that it's so hot or it's so cold. It must be his will. That's my theology, my ideology. Or you could escape. 
Some people live a life of escaping the facts, trying to distract themselves, go to another party, another job, another doctor, another relationship. Just turn off all the symptoms, run away from the symptoms. You open your spiritual bandwidth using wisdom like you set your thermostat. You set your thermostat in faith. You don't feel the set of the new temperature, but you believe it's coming. Isn't that right? You set your thermostat in faith. You don't feel the set. Like, I mean, if it if it's 60 in the house and you turn it to 70, you don't automatically feel 70, but you set it by faith and you believe it's coming. You believe you've set it for what's to come. Don't surrender, succumb to the facts or build a theology around it. Truth will always supersede the facts. Set your spiritual bandwidth, the thermostat for the desired outcome, even in the midst of extreme storms of life, so that the invisible decides the visible, the physical, what you feel, what you sense. You don't submit to the facts. You don't blame the circumstances or build a religious doctrine around the challenges of life. No, no, no. You do something about it. You set your life on wisdom. So here's the practical on how to increase your spiritual bandwidth. We want you to have a big, flowing, unlimited spiritual band life. Number one, you got to humble yourself. Proverbs 15 verse 33 says, The reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord brings instruction and wisdom, and humility comes before honor. Instructions for the thermostat. No points for pride. Pride is anti-wisdom. It's anti-truth and it constricts. Pride constricts your bandwidth. Like, I mean, pride, there's nothing like pride to do this to your bandwidth. There you go. There's your bandwidth with pride. So humble yourself. Number two, set your mind. Colossians 3 verse 2 says, and set your minds and keep them set on what is above. What's above? James says, don't be double-minded. Don't think one temperature and then think another temperature. Elijah told the people to quit limping between two opinions. Stop and set your mind. Number two. Number three, set your words. Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it for death or life. You cannot conquer bad thoughts with thoughts. You need to profess your faith, and that requires spoken words, declarations, confessions, even singing. Singing is powerful. Number four, trust God. Oh, that's such a good step. Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, lean on, trust in, be confident in the Lord and with all your heart and mind, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding, right? Get your hands off of the situation and trust in God with all of your heart. And then finally, number five, be thankful. Oh, thanksgiving is powerful. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, in everything, give thanks. It doesn't say for everything. It says in everything, in every situation, the tough ones. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you, that you give thanks. You can always find something that you can be thankful for. God's will is his word, is his wisdom. Be thankful is God's great wisdom in every situation because it maximizes. Oh, my friend, being thankful maximizes faith and results, and it maximizes your bandwidth. If you want to supercharge your bandwidth and get it flowing, get your thanksgiving up. Be thankful. Find 10 things right now that you can be thankful for, that you're just so thankful to God for that if it wasn't in your life, you would miss it. Be thankful. Number one, humble yourself. Number two, set your mind. Number three, set your words. Number four, trust God. Number five, be thankful. Now that's a spiritual bandwidth increaser, stretcher, supercharger, right? That's what the, man, you could have 18 of these things going and downloading all of God's blessings. Imagine this, we're using God's wisdom to increase your bandwidth to get more wisdom. You may have heard investors talk about using money to get more money. Farmers will tell you that they can use your hogs to make more hogs. Parents, I'll let you explain that to your little agricultural students after. But all of this to say, the more wisdom you get and apply, your capacity, your bandwidth will widen. It'll get larger 
And you, my friend, will be increasing more and more and more in God's wisdom. How's that for a boom? Some might criticize that as being a transactional relationship with God, but we can't please God unless we are trusting and relying on Him with all of our heart. He's our Father. We're His little children. Good parents know this. You can't get more transactional than that. Let's face it. We need God every hour of every day for eternity. He only asks us to believe on Him, to trust in Him. That is the pinnacle of wisdomology, trusting in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 1.30, God made Christ Jesus our wisdom. You can begin a new life in God's family right now with access to His family wisdom now. Pray this out loud along with me and set your confession for life and wisdom. Lord Jesus, I need you. Forgive me of all my sins. You died on the cross for me. You rose up from the grave. I want your wisdom. Enlarge my heart. I set my mind on your promises. Come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Praise you. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. Get our free app with the daily prayer and join us for this Tuesday Talks for an exciting, interactive question and answer and prayer time where we talk about what's important to you. At Living Room Church, you are loved. And together, we live life strong.